Some people think you need many years of planning and saving money to start their own business. Well, today I'm interviewing Ole Burns, who's a power washing business owner who proves that that's not the case. I started Burns Pro Wash during online school. I'm already making thousands of dollars a month in revenue. Ole's story goes to show that you don't need a ton of time or money to start a profitable power washing business. I started with a Home Depot pressure washer. How much profit was your first week or month? My first month legally or? Yeah. What were the challenges you faced as a teen entrepreneur? Man, what's going on with this thing? Another super important tool for me is Google Earth because it gives a very accurate measurement. So here it is, you guys. Nothing fancy, that's really the point essence of today's interview is you can start somewhere like Ole at 16 years old, making thousands of dollars of revenue every month. Do you wanna find out how he did it? Keep watching the video for more of his insights. Big thanks to Keeps for sponsoring this video. All right, Ole, let's jump into it. You started the business recently, yeah. right? April of this year? Yep. So it hasn't been that long. Not very long at all. What did you do before, and why did you decide to start your own business specifically? So before this, I was actually working at a barbecue restaurant, washing dishes, and uh, before that, I would just do odd jobs, like yard work for neighbors and all that. But I just wanted to make more money and control my own hours. And you were in high school? Yeah while you started the business, right? Yep. Did you graduate at this point? Uh, no, I'm actually uh, going into my junior year this year. Last year was online, but this year is uh, gonna be all in person. What inspired you though, as a 16 year old uh, entrepreneur to start on your own versus continue to be an employee and work somewhere? One of the biggest influences was probably your guys' channel. I'd see uh, a lot awesome. of power washing guys on there making it and just making it happen, hustling. And I decided, why can't I do it? In terms of your overall monthly expenses, what is that number, just to pay all the hard costs? It's uh, anywhere from $1,500 to $2,000 a month. Okay, not bad. And what was your best month so far? As profit goes? Yeah, I'd revenue. say it was around $4,000. Four grand, okay. So possibly a take home of north of $2,000. Cool. Uh, later on in the video, guys, we will share more insights on how to finance a business and maximize your startup investment. So keep watching. So we're here at your job site, and uh, we're gonna show you guys exactly what happens and how Oli does all the business. So let's help you out with all this stuff, and I'll ask you about operating procedures. Like, do you have anything in place when it comes to managing the, the workflow and the jobs and scheduling and everything? Yeah. How do you do that? Big tool for like managing time and like keeping organized is QuickBooks for me. It's uh, just keeping all my numbers. For numbers, on, that's yeah, QuickBooks, okay. Numbers and uh, getting estimates. That's also done through QuickBooks. You don't so, use any other third-party software? No, I use invoices and QuickBooks. What other uh, software do you use to um, just run the day-to-day -day business? Another super important tool for me is Google Earth because it gives a very accurate measurement of a service area. Oh, yeah. And I can multiply that by what I'm charging per square foot based nice. on the service I'm cleaning. Yeah, we'll talk about the, the process of, of bidding uh, a little bit later, but I've used that tool before. It's really, yeah. really effective. Uh, do you use it all the time, or are there sometimes you have to show up and actually yeah. see something it's, in person? Sometimes I can't use it because there may be like trees blocking the That's a good point. bird's eye view. Yep. But uh, I usually like to go out to do jobs most of the time, but um, in person. But I've been starting to quote them remotely to save time. Gotcha. Okay. We're here to share your story because I think you're one of the youngest ones we've interviewed who has his own business. So let's talk about the challenges that come with being a teen entrepreneur. So when you first opened Burns Pro Wash, right? What were the challenges you faced as a teen entrepreneur? How did you overcome those? Share a couple of things. My biggest challenge starting up and still now is probably just ch time management and going to school and balancing work and social life. Let's dig a little deeper. How much time is allocated to school and then business on a daily basis? When I was starting up the first month, I would spend about two hours a day on just like computer work and all that. And then I'd be skipping school to go do jobs and all that. My uh -oh. parents didn't like it. You don't encourage skipping school, no. right? Finish Stay school. In school. But there's a way like you to be in school and still make a decent revenue on yeah. a monthly basis. You can bend the rules a little bit. Right. Have you faced the, the resistance or the challenge of you being a teen and they're like, eh, I don't know, you're too young to do this job. Yeah. There's gotta be some of that. How did you overcome that? There has been people that are like kind of questionable, like, hey, this guy's just gonna tear up my deck or <laughs> doesn't know what he's doing. Kid. Yeah, but I kind of overcame that with just having all the proper licensing and insurance. 
Is there nothing in addition in terms of you know being a 16 year old, 20 year old in terms of licenses and stuff? Uh, you have to have a specialty contractor's license, but interesting. What did that cost you to get? Um, I'd say it was like 150 bucks. What total amount did you spend to officially get going? It was in the, around three or four thousand dollars in total with all the equipment and licensing. How did you fund the business? Um, I took a loan out from my mom and I paid it back. Okay. Did she ask for interest? Uh, no. So best bank ever. <laughs> best bank ever. Interest free interest loan. loan. That's awesome. How quickly did you pay it off? It took me about two to three months to pay it off. Not bad. Yeah. What else can somebody watching right now do as a newbie, if I could say that, to get their first customer? No marketing money, no budget. What was most effective for you? Is it just friends and family or is it knocking on doors? What else can you share? I'd say friends and family. Just go around your neighborhood or just like a local community that you're in mm -hmm. where people may know you or at least stay local. Were you yeah. ever hesitant on door knocking? Door knocking is kind of scary at first. Any any people, interesting experiences you can share with us and what you've learned from that? You kind of have to take like the sales pressure out of it and uh, really, you got to be really careful with door knocking because people don't like you coming to their doors sometimes. So I'd say the best way would just be friends and family and getting okay. referrals off of those. Have you had any experiences with door knocking um, that were worth mentioning? Yeah, uh, when I first started out, um, I made a bunch of flyers and it was middle of summer and I was just going around. This is when I was just doing it as like a little side hustle. I had my old Home Depot pressure washer and everything. And I was just going around passing out these flyers and there was this lady sitting out on her porch and she had a no soliciting sign, but I didn't see it. And I like went and put a flyer on her doorstep. She just started going off on uh -oh. me and I was just like, I'm so sorry. Did, did but, you make her your, your client? No. Ah, that that would have been there. a perfect outcome. <laughs> Why don't we go look at your, I would say, Humble Beginnings Burns Pro Wash trailer with all the equipment and walk us through what is must have. Like, do you use a particular tool on all of your job site and so on? So here it is, you guys, nothing fancy. That's really the point essence of today's interview is you, you can start somewhere like Ole at 16 years old, making thousands of dollars of revenue every month. So I don't wanna uh, trespass here, but I can help you take this tarp down. Yeah, sure, I, I think I got it actually. Yeah. Besides licenses and equipment costs, this is really what we're looking at in terms of like $3,000 investment that you put in, right? This, I've since upgraded my machines and equipment. So this, this machine right here alone is three grand. What's but, special about it that you want to highlight to our viewers? Um, the most important thing about this machine is the gallons per minute that pushes out. So it's not really about how much pressure it's putting out. It's about how many gallons a minute. Why is that important, really? So uh, do you need more or less? More more flow is, cleans faster, so you can, more efficient on the job site. Interesting, okay. But you are using more water, yeah. obviously. Are you connecting to the customer's water? Yes, I do. Uh, most of the time, I can't see any other options. I mean, mm -hmm. you'll deplete this yeah. guy pretty quickly. What's inside the barrel? Uh, this is what I use for my soft washing. It's all batch mix uh, sodium hypochlorite with water and soap into here beforehand. Mm -hmm. And then I will use this guy right here, which is my DIY. Kind of a makeshift thing, right? DIY soft DIY, washing yeah. system. So Dang, drop this down into the tank and then I'll hook this end. Down here? Up into a hose. Gotcha. I'll have a guy down here. So you can buy something like that, but it's probably pricey. What are yeah. we talking about? Ooh, like four grand. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. Three or four grand. But the point is, which I really want to highlight too, is you could start here. Yeah, did the, you do this I yourself? Did this for like, yeah, like 400 bucks. Wow. That's pretty cool. Outside the box kind of thinking yeah. when you start a small company. What kind of insurance do you need to start a power washing business? Uh, I carry a $2 million general liability insurance. <clears throat> so it's Is that very, minimum or can you um, do a million? Uh, you can do a million, but I just did two million just to be safe. Is that all you need to be on the roofs, on the ground, et cetera? Uh, you need a contractor's license to be operating type of equipment on people's homes. What is it costing you for insurance on a you know six month or 12 month basis? For a 12 month basis, it's $3,600. Dang, okay, so yeah. it's, would you say that's one of the more costly operating yes, costs, the very, insurance? Yeah. 
Okay, what else is part of your overhead on a monthly basis? For soft washing services, I'll use a lot of overhead and chemical cleaning. So it's the sodium hypochlorite that we use. What are you spending on, on um, average per month? I'll spend anywhere from three to $700 a month on, a, on chemical. Okay. Uh, besides insurance and the chemicals, what else is your biggest expense on a monthly basis? Um, it would have to be marketing, I think. Okay, and I think we'll dive into marketing later in terms of the platforms you're using and the ROI that you're getting on that. So you did some outdoor cleaning before this business. What was that, just in the snippet? What, what were you actually doing? I would be doing like yard work and odd jobs for people and I had a guy that would go over and work at his house. He's a family friend and he mm -hmm. had me do quite a bit of pressure washing. So mm -hmm. he uh, showed me how to use a pressure washer originally and then I had a pressure washer at my house and I was like, hey, why not make some money? Exactly. So how much of help did that give you in terms of starting out and going? It kind of just sparked the idea in my head of mm -hmm. you could make money with like a machine. Like a, as a young, I was around 12 and I oh, kind of wow. got the idea, but I never really sprung it into action until recently. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So it's all those experiences, yeah. the YouTube channel, Upflip, that kind mm -hmm. of came together in yeah. marriage and now you have your own licensed business at yep. 16. That's awesome. Guys, for more business helpful information, tips, check out our blog, upflip.com forward slash blog, or just click the link in the description below. How much profit was your first week or month, and how did you calculate that? I'm just curious, when you got started, what was it? Um, I was doing about like three jobs a week when I first started. That's April this year? Well, I started like as a side hustle right. last summer, but I took it legal this, this gotcha. spring. Yeah, that's what we count. Yeah. Okay. So. My first month legally or? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I did around like $700 in revenue and like $600 in profit. Okay, I, I like how he's like, my first month legally? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't want to say something to give me trouble. <laughs> no, or, it's fine, yeah. we, all, we all start somewhere. Okay, Oli, what's your typical profit margin? Have you done that math? Like where is yeah. it 30% profit margin after all expenses? On soft washing services, it's, uh, it's around like a, 70%, 60 to 70% profit margin. Really? Wow. And um, with power washing, it's more like 80 to 90%. Just because you're using more supplies on the soft wash? Yeah, it's a lot of overhead with chemical, but this is just a gasoline and water. Gotcha, okay. Are you experiencing hair loss? Two out of three men experience hair loss by the time they're 35, and we're here to tell you that hair loss can be treated and even prevented with Keeps. We're giving away a three-month treatment package to this random guy. Sure, he's gonna be happy. Christmas came early. Here you go, son. Use this, we'll come back to check on you. Keeps is clinically proven, doctor-recommended hair care subscription that gets delivered straight to your door. Save your time, money, and your hair. Keeps save you from having to go to the doctor visits, and also with Keeps, you only pay half the cost of a traditional pharmacy. Be sure to check back in future videos to check on this guy's progress. How did you know? Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com forward slash upflip or click the link in the description below. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash upflip. What was the whole point of this thing anyway? Let's talk about your website. What, what's important to highlight there? Who designed it? Who did you, did you hire? And what did that cost overall? Is this stuck or something? Yeah, it is. Um, I use a guy from Seattle called Mindful Web Design. No, that doesn't work. Okay. And uh, he kind of walked me through uh, the steps of building a website because I couldn't afford it. He, he was like, hey, I'll, if you pay me my hourly rate, I'll kind of give you a, put a little, little course together for you and teach you how to build a website. Mm -hmm. So I did that and that was $1,000. So you did the website yourself, right? Yeah, but uh, with the help of a professional. So what's the total cost for the site then? Is this good? Uh, $1,000. 1000 bucks. okay. Man, what's going on with this thing? Do you maintain it on a monthly basis yourself? Yes, I do. Is there a cost to that? It's mostly just time, but uh, just I time. think I, I pay like some sort of fees every month with like 50 bucks a month or something. What like platform that. is the website built on? Um, WordPress. WordPress, okay. WordPress. Well, what's more important is for you as a startup business, why is the website important? What kind of value have you seen from it? Uh, having a website is super important to the business because it kind of gives the customers a landing page and tells them about what we have, our licenses, and why they can trust us and what we bring to the table. And they can also remotely get quotes through a form that I set up on there. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So what's a must have? I mean, I can't obviously start with this potentially, right? Can I start with something less? Yeah, I would say a must have for any pressure washing business is one of these guys. It's a 16 inch rollaway service cleaner. It's got two nozzles that rotate and spin and it makes the cleaning go faster. So you can buy a pressure washer, you got this whirl away. Can you do jobs just with these two tools? Yeah, that's how I started. I started with a Home Depot pressure washer and uh, one of the, a Home Depot service cleaner, which I don't recommend starting with a Home Depot service cleaner because mm -hmm. I burned out through like three of them in the first week. So what would you recommend? I would recommend just going to like a industrial pressure washing supplier and grabbing like a commercial, like a- Commercial grade? Yeah, commercial grade. Okay. So what's next? You, we've basically just hooked up the pressure washer to the hose bib. This thing stays in the trailer. Yeah. What do you do next? You dress up like a yellow man or? Yeah, throw my bib on. I can't imagine you wearing this in summer though. So what's the tip on, on clothes, the proper clothing? I will actually just wear these in summer with like a shirt. Just because you get pretty dirty otherwise? Yeah, at my feet and my legs. What's your revenue target for 2022, end of the year? I'd like to hit like sixteen to twenty thousand dollars in revenue for the end of the summer. For end the of the summer, okay. So, what's your typical or average invoice, Oli? Would you say on a, on a per job basis? Like, um, are we talking a few hundred bucks or a couple grand? Or I'd say it's around anywhere from three hundred dollars to fifteen hundred dollars. That's about the average. Yeah. That's a pretty big spread, though. Three to fifteen. Would yeah. You, would you I'd say it averages out around five hundred dollars. Five hundred bucks. Okay. That's not bad for somebody who's still doing high school online and doing this side hustle as an official business. That's pretty cool. I hope you guys are inspired by it. All right, we're gonna do a quick uh, blitz with Oli. You got about 10 seconds to answer some of these fun questions and it starts off a bit space themed. So how would you rebrand your business on Mars? I oh, would. I got him off guard, okay. Mars, after all, pressure washing. Pressure washing the dust off of Roofs, I'm sure that all the houses there get really dusty, so I'll <laughs> integrate that in my marketing somehow. Who, whoever thinks of these questions. Okay, name one object that you would like to eternally disappear from the planet. Pickles. Pickles? Man, it's just, that's offensive to me. I love pickles, I'm joking. What do you do with your profits? I eat at Chipotle almost every day. Best part of being an entrepreneur? Making your own hours. Nice. What is your favorite business book? Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Awesome. Well, we will be giving away a free gift of Oli's favorite business book. So make sure all you have to do is answer a question below in the comments. What is the most outlandish purchase you have made? And then we will select a random winner. So go ahead and do that right now. Oli, if somebody wants to start a pressure washing business and has no money, what is the absolute minimum budget that they can start with and how would you spend it? I would say six to $700 would be the absolute bare minimum. You can get a Home Depot pressure washer with uh, some hoses, and you'd need a truck, obviously, or a some, SUV, even an SUV on. to move your stuff around. You can use your mom's minivan, yeah. too, right? If you really want to start somewhere. Yeah. Okay. That all and that's works. what you're doing, right? Is yeah. It, that's not your vehicle? No, it's my mom's. So you just, so you just hook up the trailer. Around, yeah. Nice. Where did you get the money to start your business? Uh, I'd say it was mommy and daddy. <laughs> Interest free loan? Yeah. Interest free awesome. loan. Like you said, that's the best bank to go to. So you got into this business pretty fresh, right? I'm curious, I'm asking, how did you get the knowledge, the hand-on-hand -hand experience? Did you go to some website, look at some resource to get the basics of things, or did you just learn everything on the fly? What would you suggest to our viewers in your situation? You can learn basically anything online nowadays. YouTube was a huge help for me in learning how to use like machines and mm -hmm. how to operate a pressure washer and most efficient way to clean things. And so you didn't necessarily buy a pressure washing business book. You don't, you I just would used say don't content buy advertising. one of those, yeah. It's all out on the internet. Man, that seems pretty yeah. simple. There's nothing yeah, else to it that you want to highlight in terms of learning, resources. As always, I'm trying to extract all that information yeah. from you guys. It's just flowing out yeah, of them, yeah. so. Some of the industrial equipment suppliers have also been a huge help. So mm -hmm. just talking to the guys that run there those shops, they have a bunch of super valuable knowledge on machines and what equipment to use, what tools are best and get, get things clean the fastest. Nice, yeah. okay. So how is it breaking down in terms of revenue? How much is power washing versus soft washing? I'd say it's a 70% uh, power washing and 30% soft washing. Gotcha. How important is it, uh, Ole, to have a variety of services as a startup? 
I think it's super important to like have at least a little bit of variety in what you offer because if there's a big change in the market or like one of your machines breaks and you can't offer one of those services for a while, you can mm -hmm. be out of business. I want to come back for just a second in terms of offering multiple services, right? What are the challenges or advantages or disadvantages to offering more than one? Um, the more services you have, the more equipment you got to buy. So when you're starting up, it may take longer to make that money back on your initial investment. Mm -hmm. But I'd other than say, that, no, there's no disadvantages. Okay, so just more cost of equipment, and that's for you guys to decide for your market, right? What's going to yield the most? So what's important, like an aha moment for a website, if you have one, what's important to do? Using visuals for my customers to see the before and after of when the work's completed is a really big tool for me. That really makes a difference? Yeah. People just love seeing, I guess, what it looked like before and then the magic you did. Yeah. So what are we doing on this job as well, just uh, so our audience know? We're doing all the walkways, the driveways, and the back deck. Gotcha. May I ask what this job was quoted at? Um, this was, for just the flat grounds, it was $540. And how long will it take you? I think it'll take me around three hours. Three hours, okay. You plan to finish today? Yeah. Gotcha. All right, well, let's keep at it. Uh, marketing, super important. When you got started as a young entrepreneur, what did you do in terms of marketing when it came time to actually spend marketing money? Mm. Uh, wh how did you allocate that? Wh where did that go? Um, I try to dedicate at least 20% of my profits to marketing, reinvest in marketing, mm -hmm. and I'll use Angie listings. So it's like affiliate marketing. I'll pay yep. like around $50 per customer that I'll get off of there. And then I'll also use uh, Facebook ads or just Facebook groups in general. You're spending a couple hundred bucks a month and that's split between Facebook and Angie's, uh, Angie's list. Is that it pretty much as far as platforms? Yeah, I'll use uh, an app called Nextdoor, which has also been really great. I've heard of that one, yeah. And it's completely free, so. How much business have you gotten from it though? I've gotten around like six jobs off of there. Nice. So it's okay. pretty good. You've got your own profile yeah. in there. Cool. All right. In terms of growing or doubling your revenue, for example, today, right? Let's say you did five grand this month. If you want to go to 10 next month, what do you think as a young entrepreneur you need to do to get to that number? I would need to get a bigger trailer set up and I would need two of them. And I would what? have two workers going full time doing jobs for me and I would be focusing on marketing. Gotcha. So two employees, you're fully focused on marketing, and then you've got a little bit more equipment. Okay, that makes sense. Talk to us about the process of a customer reaching out to the point where you show up to their house and start cleaning. Are there apps you use to communicate? Here, let me help you out. Are there apps you use to communicate? Um, text messages, tell us everything about that. Yeah, so people can reach out to me via email, mm -hmm. text message, Facebook, or they can just call me. Whatever, if they reach out to me on like email or text, I'll have a, I have a bunch of written up, um, just like copy and paste messages that I was plugging their name in. So yeah, at least for, uh, templates. Yeah. Via text message. Yeah, so I can just get what, uh, want, what they want cleaned and understand the project that they have. Yeah, I'll, I'll ask you get, uh, the customer what they're getting cleaned and if there's any like, any problems with the surfaces or like say there's a big crack in the deck or it's rotting away that's something that i'd need to know beforehand and then i would uh go out on site or uh use google earth to quote the job and i'll send them over an estimate and schedule them what is your closing rate would you say out of 10 people that reached out how many are you going to close and sign a deal with i'd say 80 percent. that's pretty good yeah Okay, any tips and tricks on how to get to 80% or more? I'd is say it your demeanor, is it something um, else that you're yeah, offering? Yeah, staying friendly and just uh, acting like a human, not a robot, trying to be like super <laughs> nice. Because when I first started sending out these messages, my friend was looking over um, and he was like, oh, you sound like a bot right now. <laughs> and so I'm just, I'm just trying to sound like super friendly and welcoming and inviting. That's awesome. In a world of AI yeah. and technology, man, we need more of that. Yeah. Just personal, friendly customer service. So Oli, besides a website, what other areas should your business be present in this year so that you get maximum exposure and continue to grow as a pressure washing business? One really important thing is just being present on multiple different platforms like TikTok and Instagram. That's a big mistake that I've made and I actually haven't been posting, so that's what I'm really trying to focus on from this month. For you now, it's just basically Facebook, your website, and then what was the other platform I you mentioned? Nextdoor. Nextdoor, okay, right. But you, you really believe that TikTok can do Wonders for pressure yes. washing business? As, just getting content out there. I've seen people like landing big commercial jobs from getting TikTok. Yeah, okay. I guess TikTok's on its way up and it's just the beginning. 
Can you share an experience where it was a little bit of a struggle in the beginning to get customers to commit to you and give you the job? How did you overcome that? Um, I would uh, present my general liability insurance statement and my bonds and all my licenses and I would say, hey, we're legit. If we cause any damage, we're totally liable for it. Our number one job is taking care of you guys as the customer and getting your guys' stuff clean. That's awesome. So they weren't as concerned about your age. They were concerned that you insured your license and all those things. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, I think, encouraging those watching that, hey, it doesn't matter how old you are. Just get the right paperwork, get the yeah. right insurance and go sell the service. Yeah. Did you write a business plan, and if so, why, and what are the golden nuggets that you can share with us on why that's important? Yeah, I do, actually. I had, uh, I had a family friend help me write a business plan, and it's super important mapping out like all your expenses, your profit, where money's going, money coming in, money coming out. How many pages? It's uh, one page. Good. I was going to say, if it's like 30 pages, that's the wrong business plan, right? Yeah. Because I've heard from a business guy, like, it needs to be on one page. Mm -hmm. You can't fit it on one page. So he helped you. Mm -hmm. Do you still have it? Yes, I do. How close are you to achieving what's on that page at this um, point, four months in? i am still got a long way to go. I'm, I want to grow into, like, a very large company and then eventually get into real estate. But, but why do the business plan in the first place? Just curious. Like, uh, just to help map everything out or have goals. And then as far as market research, how much did you do to look at who are your competitors, what their services are, costs, and how do you dive into that world of competition? Yeah, so I would say the pressure washing industry is a little bit oversaturated at the moment. There's a lot of people doing Maybe in this what market. I'm doing. Yeah, but um, I did not do a whole bunch of market research. It was more just nice. get up and go. Get up and go, okay. That's but, what we uh, do when we're young. We don't, we don't yeah. ask too many questions, we just do it. Yeah. So what's your biggest struggle right now as a business owner? What can you think of? Biggest struggle for me is honestly just being so young and having to be in high school and I can't really put my full energy into the company and take right. it full time. So I'd say it's a, it's a full time for like someone my age, but it'd be a part time for an average adult looking at hours. Right, because leaving the high school is not an option, right? Yeah. I mean, mom, I, mom's I, probably not going to let you I've, do that. I've done it a few times and mom and dad are not happy. Because, you know, there are successful people that have yeah. never even hit the, the, the door of the school. Yeah. But I'm not encouraging you. I think you should finish it yeah. and continue growing. What are some pitfalls in terms of growing a side hustle into a full-time business for you? Time management it was probably just my biggest thing, just managing my schoolwork with my business and then also trying to have a social life at the same time. I was going to say, like, how much of that do you have? Because you're yeah. here working while others may be sitting it's, on the computer playing it's games been or hanging very out? very variable. Some people, all, you know what FOMO is, like fear of missing out? Right. I'll be, like, working and my friends will be at the beach hanging out, having a good old time. Especially with summer in the yeah. Pacific Northwest? Yeah, it's been, it'll, I'll have some FOMO sometimes, but. Man, that's commitment. Yeah. How many hours a week do you invest into the business versus school? It's very variable when I'm in school, but now that it's uh, summer, right. it's more kind of, I can put like more my full attention into it. But take the time where, when you are in school, just curious yeah, to understand that. Yeah, it'd be anywhere from like 20 to 30 hours a week. 20 to 30. And then how much school? 10, 15? Or are you doing? Yeah, 10. Okay. Not a lot, of, not a lot to do as a high schooler? Well, there's a lot to do, but sometimes I don't choose to do it. Okay, I've been out of it for a while. Yeah. What do you think most customers expect from a pressure washing company? Like, what have you learned in the last, you know, three to four months? Pressure washing? Yeah. They basically just want anything like organic growth and grime to be removed from the surfaces without it being damaged. Mm -hmm. And they want an affordable price. Okay. Competitive. How would you describe a uh, wonderful customer experience in your perspective? They reach out to me via email and I send them over a quote and uh, they're happy with it. Come to their house in and out as quick as possible and they send me on my way. Okay. Do you ask for reviews in person via text or yeah, email? Yeah, I, I, I usually ask them in person because mm -hmm. I'll just say, hey, I'm a young I'm a young company. My company floats or sinks based on these Google reviews. So. How many reviews do you have? At this I have point? zero at the moment. There's okay. a. I'm having an issue with like the Google. It like won't let people. I'm sure um, you'll figure it yeah, out. But just getting things started. Tell us about an experience. If you had a dissatisfied customer, you know they left a bad review or not yet. Luckily, you're at zero, yeah. so you have a good zero platform to start with. But have you had those opportunities to learn something about that experience and get better? Whether they um, weren't happy with your job and how did you deal with it? Thankfully, for now, I haven't had any angry customers. But if I nice. were to have somebody leave a bad review or reach out to me, I would come back and I would do what I can to make it right. Well, we hope that you have few of those, but at the same time, it's a good learning opportunity. Yeah. Cool.
What is your vision for Burns Pro Wash for the next five to 10 years? Where do you want to be? I'd like to be at the top of the industry here in Seattle, which is, it's a big goal, but why not shoot for it? Because we may uh, do a follow-up on you. Yeah. So why don't you tell us where you want to be in two years from now? We'll reach out and see if you've gotten there. Yeah, I'd like to be doing at least like half a million dollars in sales by the my first year out of high school or my senior year. Okay, when do you graduate? Uh, I graduate 2024. 24, okay, yeah. So 25 would be a good follow-up year. Yeah. All right, well, this has been a pleasure. I hope you guys were inspired by his not only young age and the fact that he's doing this hustle and doing many other things and and you're gonna go far so yeah. we really appreciate your thank time thank you likewise well that's a wrap i hope you guys enjoyed this episode before you go make sure you check out another interview we've done with alan who is a 22 year old and makes fifty thousand dollars a month with his mobile car detailing business and thanks to keeps for sponsoring this video